and welcome to Understanding and Enjoying Music. Um, my name is Scott Poole. I wrote the book uh, that you're about to embark upon and I wanted to make this little tutorial uh, for how to navigate the textbook and how to get in there and actually do some reading and uh, listening and how this work should work for your particular class. Um, this book can be used by a variety of different professors who have different ideas on how to make it work. So what I give you will be uh, what I do for my classes, um, but it can be adaptable by, to just about anything. So I wanted to start with just this blank page uh, on Google. And what you will find is that I've uh, bookmarked the text. There's our UEM, Understanding and Enjoying Music. And this should take you to Great River Learning. Um, if you're holding an access card, uh, you'll be brought to this page and you can set up your account. If you have not yet purchased an access code and you're just coming off of an email, you can also do it this way. Um, however you're getting to this site, uh, this, is, this is probably what you'll see. So uh, obviously I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in. And once you sign in, you may be using a number of courses that use that works with uh, Great River Learning. So you might see a lot of different ones here. But um, if you haven't enrolled or if you haven't uh, registered here online with the course, you'll have to sift through and find the publication. But once you do and once you get registered, this is what you'll see every time. So let's go ahead and dive into the publication. And I'm just going to pick uh, one of my classes that I'm teaching this semester. You might see a whole bunch there. But this is just one that I'm teaching. And we're going to submit. And since I've been in here already, it takes me right back to where I left off, which is a great thing about the text. But let's go to the welcome page, because that's what the first thing that you're going to see. And we have the welcome page for students that you can read and a little bit of information about professor for, for professors. Um, what you will probably be directed to do is go straight into the chapters. The way that this book is set up is it's in chapters and then modules. The chapters are designed to start with chapter one, go straight through chapter five. So one, two, three, four, five. Your professor can will decide uh, how long to spend on each chapter. I spend about a week per chapter, so uh, a week in a typical 16-week semester. So, um, so let's say that that's just week, weeks one, two, three, four, five. After we get finished with the chapters, we move on to modules. And the cool thing about these modules is that I see a little double here. We need to take care of those because they appear twice. They are the same thing, so we, just, we can get rid of those later. But um, what you see here is, I think, about 10, 11 different modules. And there's going to be, a, once we're fi completely finished with the text, you might see 14 modules on different uh, topics in music. It would not be expected for any professor to cover every module and every chapter in a semester. There's way too much information. But I set up the text this way so that you can pick and choose which modules you prefer to do. Um, and if your professor says we're going to do these certain modules, then you'll do those. Uh, the professor may have you uh, pick your own modules. You never know. Um, but let's say that uh, the professor says after the five chapters, we're going to do the chamber music module, the module on jazz and popular styles, and then maybe we jump down here to opera, and maybe the symphony and orchestral genres. And then that may be an entire semester for you. So that's how that works. Chapters here and modules that you work through. But let's go back to the chapters because that's where everybody's going to start. And if we start here with uh, introduction to music, elements of music, then we have history, history two, history three, and this takes us all the way up to the present day. Let's go right in the middle here and choose our history one. What you'll find in every chapter is 
you'll have our learning objectives. This is what we're going to go over. And then we start right in with the text. The text is designed to uh, read through just like a book and we would read about understanding historical perspective uh, in our first chapter on history. And what you'll find throughout the text are these questions that are questions of reflection. We call them poll questions. We're kind of polling uh, what you as students think. There really aren't any uh, right or wrong answers. Uh, they, we were just looking for um, thoughtful answers for you to think about what you've been reading. And in this first one, you know, imagine yourself as an alien being who is spying on the lives of humans in your city. You know, what, how do we act as humans? What are some unique observations that we can make about the current time period? Uh, how do we behave uh, as people in our current uh, current existence, our current society? You know, what are the values of our society? How do we exist from day to day? Um, sometimes we take so many things for granted that we go through, uh, we don't really pause to think about how we actually behave. So that's just something for you to write in. And what you would write in, let's just say, um, what are some unique observations you can make about the current time period? We're going to say something like, uh, <laughs> the beings of Earth <laughs> seem to be preoccupied, uh, let's say, pre how do you spell preoccupied? <laughs> preoccupied with these little devices in their hands. <laughs> and of course I'm talking about the use of cell phones. Um, we would do this and we can save if we want to come back. Maybe we haven't completed our thought, we can save it. But then when we're ready to submit to our professors, we hit submit. And I would hit the submit button. We give it a moment to process. and form has been submitted successfully. So we say, okay. So thank you for re your responses, all right? So we go on and we keep on reading about um, history. And we read, 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 read. And we would read some more, again, just like a regular textbook. Um, we'll read some more here. And we have another poll question talking about inventions of the present day, and we would fill that out just like the other one. Um, then we get to the bottom of the page, and we go to the next page, and we get to learn about music in antiquity. We would read, read about this, and here's where we find uh, the first listening example in this particular chapter. Um, all of these links, we click on them, and what happens is we get a... a pause that for a moment, but we get a new window that opens up with uh, a link to the piece of music called the Hurrian Hymn. Um, I highly suggest that while you are uh, a member of this class that you go ahead and subscribe to uh, YouTube Premium. All of the examples here are through YouTube. And unless you just like listening to commercials and such, uh, you pay the fee for the YouTube premium, at least for the two or three months while you're in the class, it'll save you a lot of time. So let me go back here and just to reiterate, the listening examples are part of your reading. They are part of your experience in the class. So I would read this chapter or this paragraph. I'd read, read, read. And as soon as I get to this, I would go ahead and click on it and give it a listen. And this is actually just almost like a miniature documentary, a uh, four minute documentary on the Hurian Hymn, in that it talks a little bit about it and we would listen all the way through to the end. And then when, we, when we're finished listening, we can exit out of that window and go back to our text and then continue reading. So really just to, to reiterate here is that the, uh, the listening examples are part of the text. They're, consider it part of the reading. 
because we're going to come back to these uh, listening examples in just a few minutes here. So we would read some more. We would read about the medieval era. And when we get down here and we see uh, text that is outlined in green here, we click on that and that's going to be one of our glossary terms. These are important terms to know for the class and to uh, maybe write these down in your notes or come back to these. These are the types of uh, terms that are going to end up on exams and such. So we would read, read, read some more. And as we get down here to the bottom, more glossary terms, another opportunity to answer a poll question. We go to the next page. More glossary terms, more glossary terms, another poll question, and here's another um, example of uh, to listen to. So I think I missed the other one on the other on the previous page. So if I want to go back, I can go back to the previous page. Yeah, there was the example I missed it. Um, so. Again, I would read here, click on this, it opens in a new window. Again, we listen all the way to the end, and then maybe close out. So by the time you, you finish through and you get all the way down, you're going through all of uh, the chapter, listening to everything as it goes through. You may choose to answer all the poll questions. Uh, your professor may let you know that uh, you, they may turn some of the poll questions off. Uh, they may give you lots of points for the poll questions. They may give you just a few points. It's really up to the individual professor. So we move through the text. We're listening to more. We get to the Renaissance. And as you can see, lots of examples here to listen to. We get down through here. When you finish the chapter, you end up with a listening quiz and a chapter quiz. Um, again, these are uh, things like exams. Uh, they're for points. Uh, some professors may give very few points or even none. They may just have you do these for, for fun. Uh, some professors may make these the the big points in your class. It's really up to the individual professor. So be sure to, uh, to find out from your teacher uh, you know, how important these are. But regardless, uh, whether they're for just a few points or a lot of points, let me take you through them. This is where listening to the pieces of music was very important because you should, in order to prepare for these listening quizzes and the, the chapter quizzes, you would want to read through the chapter, listen to the pieces of music, and then maybe go back and skim the chapter again. Reading something twice is never a bad thing. Skim the chapter again and listen to the pieces again. And then when you've listened to the pieces two, maybe three times, we can begin our attempt on the listening quizzes. And so when we start, for my class, I have five questions set up. Some professors may have a uh, hundred questions. You, you never know. Uh, but the way all of these will work is you click on the uh, piece of music, and this is the one we just kind of listened to a bit. It opens up in a window. I'm going to pause this for a moment and read the question. You may want to open this in an entirely different window and move your window over some way so that you can look at both at the same time. At what approximate point does the texture change from monophony to polyphony? And we would have to listen and say, if we listened and said, well, I really don't know. I may have to listen to this whole thing again. Or if you've already listened to it a couple of times, you might say, you know, I know that the answer is never. <laughs> and so I could save the answer. Once I save the answer, it goes to the next question. 
Now, depending again on whether your professor has this uh, set up to where you can come back or if you have to finish it all in one seating, uh, that's something to ask your professor. But in my classes, you could go away and leave this. So your, your answer is saved, but it is not submitted. And so once I finish all my questions here, then I would finally hit I am finished and submit for a grade. Or maybe I'm right up against a deadline and uh, the, the uh, exam is due, but I'm only through three questions. I really want to hit I am finished, please submit for grade. Uh, you need to do that so that you can uh, move on to the next thing and that you can get things submitted for the grade. Again, saving your answer doesn't necessarily submit. Uh, so finish your, your questions here. Here's another one. We would click on this one, answer the question, and then submit, save answer, and then submit for grade. So let's pretend that I've submitted and it asks me, yes, I will submit. Again, processing, and then it tells me how I did. I didn't do any of these, but I did get this one right. Okay, so let's go back to the book now. So we just finished our listening quiz. Chapter quizzes are much the same. We can begin our attempt. Here we have a few more questions. We have 10 questions because there's no listening involved in these. And I simply answer the questions, which would not be a topic for a troubadour song. Hmm, I'm going to guess nightly battles. And I can save my answer and it goes strict right on to the next question. One of popular subjects for the motet was, I could say the Virgin Mary. And let's say I'll save that answer and then I'm going to be finished. I would go ahead and answer the rest of these to get my full credit, but let's submit for now and see what happens. So here it tells me that I missed question number one, but I got question number two correct. So that's how these work. Let's go back home, back to our publication. And it takes us right back where we left off. I could then continue with the chapter menu. I could go on to chapter four, chapter five, and then start to explore my modules. Again, if you're using this through an online course, you may be able to go through these just as quickly as you, as you can uh, or take the time that your professor gives you. If you're working in a traditional lecture course, your professor will probably guide you through the chapters and modules that you work on in any particular week. So I hope you enjoy the text. Uh, feel free to contact me personally. Uh, through the publishers uh, if you have any ideas for the text. Maybe there's a module here that you that's missing that you would like to see. Uh, we're always open for new things. So um, again, I hope you enjoy and uh, good luck using the uh, understanding and enjoying music.